Hello everyone and welcome to part 6 of making a cloud game. Before I continue, I want to congratulate you for making it all the way through until the final part and persisting through all the difficulty in the middle. By the end of this video, you will be rewarded with a fully finished cloud tic-tac-toe game complete with the winning animation and the thumbnail. Let us begin. First, we must go into the player reader sprite. Within the main forever loop, we had left a lot of these else conditions uncoded and we will be filling those up now. If during the second time, winner is not none, then it means that player 2 has won the game. Before we go into the end screen, we need to collect some data from the square so that the line can properly be drawn. For this, we broadcast a new message called get coordinates and wait. Since it is player 2 who has won, we switch backdrop to P2. We broadcast another new message called draw line and wait. This message is the cue for the line sprite to actually draw the line. Once this is done, we stop all. The code when player 1 wins is almost the same. We simply switch backdrop to P1 instead of P2. Next, we have to take the condition where moves made is equal to 9. The first part of the code is quite similar, but at the end, instead of deciding the next player's turn, we would want both the players to know that the position is a stalemate. In order to do this, we first set winner to stalemate. Then we switch backdrop to stalemate. We wait for 2 seconds and then hide player 1 and player 2 and then stop the program. This is pretty much it for the player reader sprite. And now we can program the square sprite. When get coordinates is received, we must do a series of steps extremely fast. For this, we create a custom block called get coordinates, making sure to run without screen refresh. Now, we want the line sprite to draw a line through the winning squares. So, for example, in this case, we would want the line drawn from square 7 to square 3. If you know some 2D geometry, you know that the equation of a line can be represented as y2 minus y1 is equals to m times x2 minus x1, where x1, y1 and x2, y2 are the two points that the line touches and m is the slope. Now, we can get into how to rotate this line in accordance to the slope later on, but for now, we must get the coordinates x1, y1 and x2, y2. Within the block, we first check if clone is yes. If it is, we check if its square number is letter 1 of item winning index of winning sequences. This square would have its coordinates as x1, y1. In order to store these values, we create four variables for all sprites. x1, x2, y1 and y2. We hide all of these and in the first condition, we set x1 to start x plus x minus 1 multiplied by 75 and y1 to start y minus y minus 1 multiplied by 75. If you understand this part, then the next condition should be a no-brainer. Here we check if square number is letter 3 and if it is, then we set x2 to the x coordinate of the square and y2 to the y coordinate of the square. With this done, we can get into the line sprite. When the green flag is clicked, we will hide it and point it in direction 90 degrees. When draw line is received, we would first want to position the line correctly and then show it. For this, we create a custom block called position, making sure to run without screen refresh. We can define the position block a little bit later. We will use the block in draw line and then show the sprite. After this, we do the same thing that we did in the player reader sprite, which is wait for 2 seconds, hide the variables player1 and player2, hide and then stop all. If you take a look at the costumes tab, you will notice two costumes, straight and diagonal. We will use the straight line for the horizontal and vertical victories while diagonal line will be used for the diagonal wins. Another thing to note here is the centering. Both these costumes have their left ends at the center. This will make things so much easier because the costume now essentially functions as a pivot. We can position it at x1, y1 
and just rotate the line in accordance with the slope to get the desired result. Okay, so first we move it to the front layer and then go back one layer so that it is behind the thumbnail. If winning index is 7 or 8, then we must use the diagonal costume, otherwise we must use the straight costume. We then move the sprite to x1, y1. Remember earlier that I mentioned the line equation. y2 minus y1 is equals to m times x2 minus x1. If we want to find m, we can write this equation as y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 is equal to m. If we want to find the degree of rotation with the x-axis, we can use the formula m is equals to tan theta and thus theta is equals to tan inverse of y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Before we program this, we must be a little bit careful. Theta is the angle that the line makes with the x-axis. For rotation, Scratch takes the angle that the sprite makes with the y-axis. So the final angle would just be 90 minus arctan of y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Let us go back into the program and implement this. We point in the direction 90 minus a tan of y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Fantastic! The last thing that we have to do now is program the thumbnail. When the green flag is clicked, we move it to the front layer and set ghost effect to 100 and then show the sprite. When the start game message is received, within a forever loop, we will always move it to the front layer. How exactly does this work? Well, at the beginning, we are setting the ghost effect to 100, so while the sprite is always being shown in the front layer, it will be completely transparent. When the program ends, all of the effects are reset, so the sprite becomes visible once again and displays in front of the screen. And that will be everything you have to do to get a fully functional cloud tic-tac-toe game. If you test out the programming, you should have the line animation show up before the beautiful thumbnail. If you've enjoyed making this, then make sure you click on the playlist on your screen right here, as that will take you to a brand new simulation based series. With that said, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.